Hi everyone, I'm Rick Campa and this is my friend and running buddy, Sarah Holkinson from Boston University. In this part of the module, we'll get you started building your action plan. The specific learning objectives we have for this part of the module are, one, to describe how to connect your goals to actions, second, to identify the pitfalls for an effective action plan, and lastly, to describe the importance of using processes as the goals in your plan. And we recognize that for some of you, this plan might be focused on achieving your own personal definition of balance. And for others, this plan might be more focused on developing strategies for how you adapt and recover from situations that are stressful. Both are okay. This is your personal action plan. The goal here is that you would incorporate this into your daily routine. You know, it's often easy, Rick, to describe an outcome we like to see in our work or home life, but sometimes harder to initiate the steps to get there. In this part of the module, we'll help you work backward from your goal to build out all the components of your plan. We'll also come up with ways that you can hold yourself accountable by thinking about how you might check in and define or evaluate your success. So Sarah, this approach isn't just applicable for how one might think about tackling a goal. When we think about it, it's also how people do their scientific research. You're probably doing this already. For example, researchers start with defining objectives for a research project or problem. What do they want to investigate or learn and what are their hypotheses? Second, they decide on what types of evidence or data they'll need to know and if they've met their objectives. What kinds of data do I need to collect in the field or laboratory? Lastly, how can we design the study to collect these types of data? To me, Sarah, working backwards can be used for tackling many types of problems. This approach is often referred to as the backward design defined by Wiggins and McTee. So let's go through a couple of examples. One of my goals as a postdoc was to get away from my bench or desk at least once a day. I needed a mental break to be more productive, but it was hard for me to make space for it. Some of you might also want to build in regular exercise. Setting a small time goal that is realistic is a great first step. To help keep you accountable, record your time away so that you can see if you are meeting your goal. Numerous researchers have documented that the act of recording an event, like daily walks, helps keep people motivated and accountable for meeting their goals. Then plan a time in a few weeks to check in. What fraction of workdays did you meet your goal? More recently, my goals are focused on how I typically respond to stress. You know, in times of stress, Rick, I have two go-to responses. I'm either really hard on myself, like what I could have or should have done to avoid the situation, or I just put my head down and I work harder. And I'm trying new strategies in my own action plan, so I'm using a daily journal to help me keep track. And funny enough, I'm even bringing back the goal I had as a postdoc, planning time to leave my desk each day, even if it's just for a few minutes. That's great, Sarah. Something I've tried to be more strategic about is prioritizing action items on my to-do list. So what are some of the pitfalls that folks should watch out for to avoid when developing their action plans? People are goal-focused rather than process-focused. The problem with this approach are hidden in the definition of a goal, defined by the top definition of my Google search, as an aim or desired result. Using a goal-focused strategy, it doesn't help a person determine how they'll meet that goal. And second, it is often too broad and hence not measurable. And you know, Brick, another pitfall that we've talked about a lot, and even practiced, unfortunately, is just being too ambitious, um, particularly given our individual time constraints. It's like wanting to go from relaxing on the couch to running a marathon, or planning to publish your paper in a month when the experiments aren't finished. You can make small changes and adjust as you are successful, rather than try to aim for large changes and then feel overwhelmed or disappointed when they aren't successful. Sarah, this is an important pitfall to recognize. I know when I plan with graduate students or, or postdocs, this is a common one, or even something I came up with when I coached cross-country runners in high school. As you've mentioned, you and I have practiced this more often than we should have. And lastly, are the goals that you're setting measurable? Not having measurable goals will surely set you up for having an unsustainable plan. There will be too much wiggle room, no threshold that you have to reach, or work that you are accountable for. Now it's time for you to go to work. What is your goal? What process might you take to get you there? How will you know if you're on track? Are there people you can get feedback from or talk to regularly, perhaps through this MOOC? Fill out the matrix to help you plan.